I want to go back over these numbers. Uh, one of the subscribers uh, pointed out that I did the math wrong on this, and he's totally right. So, Ray, shout out to you. Thanks for pointing that out. Um, so let's just go back through the numbers, make sure everything's, everything's right. So uh, I'm trying to get the basically the transmission bell housing and then the engine, everything measured back to this line, which is the back of the block. So again, took these dimensions. Um, using that straight edge and uh, off the back of the block so I could measure into the end of the crank or to the end of the crank my protector plate my bell housing my transmission all of these numbers were were correct okay so if you do the math because I want to find out what the distances are to the to the back of the block um, so if you do the math so for the pilot bearing to the back of the block it's uh, the spacer here, 1.250 minus the 11 sixteenths, which is 0.6875. Okay, and come out with 0.563. So from the back of the block, uh, the end of the crank is 0.563. Then for the input shaft, and where it is to the back of the block, um, the bell housing, and I kind of redid this here so that it comes out to, uh, uh, makes a little bit more sense, I think, in the order that I did this. So uh, the length of the input shaft is 6.625. I subtract the length uh, or the depth of the bell housing, 6.375, and then this protector plate at 0.125. Okay, and I come out with 0.125. So basically the end of the transmission uh, or the uh, the end of the input shaft sticks out 0.125 from the protector plate. So looking at these together, again the end of the crank, 0.563 from the back of the block, and from the back of the block the input shaft to the transmission is 0.125. So now how does all this relate? This was my old drawing. I've made a new drawing here. Okay, red is the transmission, and blue is the engine. So as Ray pointed out, I subtracted basically the point, sorry, the point 0.125 from the point 0.563 when really it should have been additive. So how it actually looks out, it looks like is this, which is a little more scale to scale. Um, my input shaft goes way into my bearing because the pilot bearing is here so there's no worries about that so then the next concern was to make sure that the pilot bearing doesn't bottom out onto the spline portion of the shaft so if you do the math I actually have 0.312 clearance between the end of the crank and where those splines start uh, so I have plenty of clearance here but another thing Ray pointed out and I didn't realize it is that the pilot bearing actually can go farther into the crank uh, so I'll have even more clearance here because um, I just pounded it in uh, to where it was even with the back of the crank so again the numbers all work out um, certainly they're better than what they were before as far as how much the input shaft is being guided by the pilot bearing obviously plenty of it is um, there should be no problem with that <clears throat> and again thanks Ray for pointing it out um, hope everybody kinda understands the new numbers